Hey everyone, how's it going? Today, I want to introduce an awesome feature of our WordPress File Manager plugin, WordPress Media Folder. It acts as a media storage, simplifying the management of a large number of media and files. The Google Cloud integration with WP Media Folder adds the possibility to automatically upload your entire WordPress media library to Google Cloud. Get rid of your server limitation with media by applying the option to remove media after Google Cloud Upload. Of course, you also have the option of using a backup to restore your WordPress media library. So let's take a look at how this is done. Okay, before we dive into using Google Cloud integration, let's connect our Google Cloud account to our WordPress site. First off, head over to the Settings section on WordPress, then click on WP Media Folder. Once there, go to the Cloud tab, select the Offload Media option, and choose Google Cloud as your provider. Now, you'll need to hop over to your Google Cloud console and create a credential to link up with WordPress. I'll walk you through it step by step, but don't worry, I'll also include a document in the video description for reference. If there's anything you're unsure about, feel free to ask. On your project's main panel, click on New Credential, then select OAuth Client ID. Choose your application type and proceed. You'll need to fill in two URLs, one for your website and the other for the redirect URL, which you can copy from the cloud setting and media folder. Once that's done, you'll receive the client ID, client secret, and project ID. Just copy and paste them into your settings like this. With the Google Cloud integration in WP Media Folder, you can automatically upload your entire WordPress media library to Google Cloud, freeing up server space. You can even opt to remove media from your server after it's been uploaded. And if you ever need to restore your media library, you've got the backup option at your fingertips. Before you can start using Google Cloud to offload your media, there's one final step, creating a bucket. Head over to your cloud storage, create a bucket, and fill in some necessary details like data storage and access control. Once that's sorted, you're ready to upload your media files to the bucket. Once you've got your bucket set up and filled with media files, return to the WP Media settings in WordPress and select the bucket from your options. You should now see a new folder in your media library for your cloud offloaded files. Let's take a closer look. Here, you can see my media synced from the cloud to WordPress, including various file types like JPGs, documents, PDFs, zip files, Excel files, and more. So, stay tuned for further exploration of cloud offloaded media within your WordPress setup. Once you have connected WP Media Folder with Google Cloud you will be able to offload your existing WordPress media library to your Google Cloud bucket. Moreover, any new media you upload will be automatically and instantly sent to Google Cloud as a background process. And if you add your Google Cloud media to your WordPress posts or pages, they will appear just like normal WordPress media without any difference from the usual media library. Instead of copying your media library to Google Cloud you can also remove the media uploaded from your server and keep it only on Google Cloud, this process is called offload. This is a real WordPress media library offload. Within the WordPress offload folder, I can create a new folder and upload media to it. With the two-way synchronization between my WP site and Google Cloud Storage, theoretically, the media files I just uploaded to WP will also appear in my Google Cloud Storage bucket. Having this full synchronization between the two platforms can significantly streamline your workflow, as you're essentially working in two places at once. Now that you've learned how to link your Google Cloud Storage to your WordPress media library, you might be curious if you can use this media in your WordPress content, like on a page. Let's give it a try. Here on my page, which I built with Elementor, let's search for the image widget, drag it over, and select the folder containing all the offloaded media from my media library. Just like any other media file you upload directly to your library, the offloaded media files from cloud storage should function the same. Let's hit the preview button to get a better look at the files. Now that you know you can use these cloud offloaded files just like normal ones, you can incorporate them into any pages or projects you're currently working on. Who wouldn't want extra storage to offload media, right? Before we wrap up, let's quickly explore some additional options in the settings. The CDN, which stands for Custom Domain Name, is integrated within the plugin. To use it, you'll need to first enable the Compute Engine API and Certificate Manager API in the Library section. 
A custom domain name enhances branding, credibility, and trust by establishing a unique online identity. It boosts professionalism, aids SEO efforts, and grants full control over your online presence. Overall, custom domain names offer significant advantages for businesses and individuals seeking to build a strong online presence and trust with audiences. Setting up a CDN involves a comprehensive process, and if you're interested, I'll include the document link in the description. The attachment label setting applies a label to media files stored on Google Cloud Storage, making them easier to recognize. The Copy to Google Cloud Storage option synchronizes your media files from your local storage to your cloud storage. The Remove After Upload option does exactly what it says, it deletes the file from your local storage after uploading it to the cloud. If you choose to enable this option, be sure to exercise caution. To wrap things up, let's take a look at the pricing for this integration. In addition to the Google Cloud connection we just covered, the WordPress Media Folder plugin offers several other great features, such as Media Import Export, Media File Access Limitation, and other cloud connectors like Dropbox and OneDrive, among others. It's also compatible with popular third-party plugins like DV Builder, Gutenberg, and Elementor, which I demonstrated earlier in this video. The plugin is available for $49, but if you want to use the Cloud Connectors add-on, like Google Cloud, you'll need to upgrade to the $69 option which includes all the integrations I mentioned. And that's for an unlimited number of websites, no domain limitation, no support limitation. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay informed about new plugin features and ask us any questions using the comments. And of course, you'll find all the useful links we've talked about in the description. Have a productive day, bye!